come out, I was only out 10 minutes, I was straight back in. So during that time, um, I was recalled. I had a big license to do. I had like six years to do. So what, that was it. Once you're recalled on your license, mm. you're doing the six years until you get parole. So my head was blown kind of thing. It, 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 was, a, it was a bit of a tough time, but I, you know, I just swallowed it, whatever. But my mate was in there and he was doing these murals with paintbrushes and shit. So I was like, fucking let me jump on that. So in the end, we just had this job, me and my mate Noel. And we were going around like the prison in uh, Bridgen, the park. And we were doing like big bow days on the wall. and Stuff the, it. Yeah. The killer killer podcast. The killer killer official dot com. Street culture TV. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast live and direct. Central London or as central as you need to be. Tudes to bees. You don't want to be anywhere else. Believe that. I'll title the shows and carers. People that have been supporting the podcast from the jump. Huh? This is how we're doing it over here. It's uh, street culture. It's the aim of the game. And if you know about it and you want to know more about it, it's a television app. You can get it. Free download. iPhone, Android, and all of those uh, uh, free fucking app stores. It's, it's, it's a good time to be alive, man. Um, big shout out to our sponsors, Hoddle Warriors crew over at the Crypto Moon Boys Hideout. That's some NFT business for you. Um, and yo, inside the house today... We have Wales representing, hello, and people coming for a road trip, and they're inside the place. We get them a bag on, bring them on the podcast, you know. If you're from Wales, Cardiff, surrounding area, you'll know this man very, very well. We're going to indulge, get deep into his history and more, the Welsh side of things. Kesto inside the place. How are you, my brother? Good, thank you, bro. Thanks for having me. <laughs> nice How's to it see been? You. How's it been? Yeah, all good, man. Yeah, all good. Busy, busy down there. Yeah. Beautiful part of uh, the country you're from, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's amazing down there. It's beautiful, yeah. especially like the town where I'm from, Bally Island. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, amazing. Got all the beaches down there, the woods and stuff. So got a graph shop there, haven't you? Yeah, we got the graph shop. It's all good. Yeah, oh, me, it's so good. Me and Calm One. Yeah, hold that Calm One. Big yeah, up. and we just been doing that for a hot minute, like, and yeah, it's coming on leaps and bounds, just snowballing into, into whatever it's going to become. Ooh, it must be interesting. I mean, dude, I, I have to say this. When you're living in such a beautiful part of the, the, the world, it must be really hard to go fucking bombing and vandalising. No, 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 no. It's easy. It's easy. <laughs> really? It gets yeah. easier, right? <laughs> because it's like anywhere, isn't it? You've got your murky bits and then you've got your beautiful bits and just kind of try to leave the nature resorts alone, isn't it? Who wants yeah. to bomb them? But everything else is yeah. up for grabs, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. You must get a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, class of writers and artists and people passing through your shop. Yeah, we've had a, we've had loads of people through. Like you know, we've had um, from all over the world, really. Um, people from Amsterdam. We've had Ritu down from New Jersey. Yeah. Re Pulse. Um, Big up Pulse all day. Load of boys from London. Mm-hmm. We've had Oglo through, and yeah, so it's oh. been good, man. People just pass on through, and you know, it's kind of become that focal point now so if people are visiting Wales they come to the shop get their loop and do what they do then maybe in the city centre so yeah it's like a graph embassy for fucking Wales um, big shout out <laughs> to our sponsors Hoddle Warriors like, crew over the wanted, Crypto Moon you know, Boys hideout that's all some for NFT the, all business for, writers, for you like, um, and yo, you know, we've got two massive you know what time it is and people come through and maybe paint them oh sick yeah so we um, yeah we redeveloped the place we've got a big music studio upstairs um, we teach a load of kids workshops and stuff. Wow. So like uh, graph, just teaching them proper graph as well. People might look at it, oh, you know, a graph workshop. But now nah, we're teaching these kids properly. We've had like 1,500 kids through in the last year. Stop it. Yeah, and they're all doing outlines and stuff and learning about the history and the do's and the don'ts and, you know, and then they all go away with like a sick piece of graph each. So... It's been it's been amazing down there. So to to have that, to put that mark and try and keep graph alive where we are, we couldn't have done no more. Like you know, like we go back on uh, on the manor doing a piece, and the kids just come round. They all know who we are, and they're just like, oh, we want to go. And and then the ones out of them fifteen hundred that are real keen, yeah. 
then we'll just take them under the wing and we'll just develop them into writers. So we got like nine, 10, 11 year olds and they're doing full on colour pieces on the wall. You couldn't write, well, you could write, they are. But what's incredible is that you've got that volume of people that are coming in with an interest. Yeah. I guess I guess your reputation precedes you, but there's also got to be some sort of attraction to make people want to be a part of that and yeah. be, be, a, be, a, be a student. Well, it's just it's just graph in general, isn't it? It's, it's everywhere now. It's more in the public eye than ever before at the moment, and people want a piece of it. You know, you get some people, they know what we do, so they just want a piece, piece of graph for the bedroom, for the mm. kids, because it's cool, whatever. Mm. But then you get the ones that are real keen, and they're like, now nah, my boy wants to do this, my girl wants to do this. So they bring them through, and we take them under the wing, and they're all developing nicely, little graphers around the town. You it's see amazing. the... You know, you, you you see them from never doing a piece of graph before and then they're suddenly doing these outlines and then I'm like, yo, come to the shop now and we're going to do a piece. So you just give them the paint and then they do their first piece and then you're driving around town, you see a little tag here and there and you're like, yeah, it's rolling. Oh, my God, that's amazing. Yeah. They'll cite you as being, and I'm sure a lot of people right now who are f- very familiar with your work um, in your region of the world uh, will, will, will be delighted to see you here, but more so would have been influenced by you within the context of, you know, being students at the shop. Yeah. Or have been witness to you and your, you know, your the inception of Kesto from the 80s. Yeah, well, nine, early 90s onwards, really. Okay. And, yeah, there was some kind of inspiration within the boys that are writing now, but, you know, they're kind of schooling me at the moment. Like, you know, these boys are just fire. Mm. But, yeah, I think in the future... You know, these kids, they're going to grow up and they're going to have some decent, you know, lives within Graf and, and smash Graf and they'll probably thank me and Cam mm. and they'll lead back to the shop and that's what we want, like, you know, we don't want anything else apart from just keeping Graf alive and offering it out to people and it's like a niche thing, isn't it? It's like, mm. you know, but when you are offering out them services... You know, I think it's a good thing, like, you know. Mm, it's a win. Um, so you've got the studio and the music rooms yeah. on top. Is that, what, what's the purpose for that? Just to do more workshops. So we've got, um, do you know the house DJ Earl Jeffers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's my boy, Che. So nice. he's running the studio upstairs. And then, so we've gone from, like, the graph shop, and then we're like, right, let's do some workshops, get some kids in, do some graph with them. And then we're like, right, okay, so we take that money and then we built the studio and now we're doing DJ production workshops and then we'll get some dancers in and we do some dancing. We've got Beatbox Fozzy down there doing the, the beatboxing. Fozzy, you know what time it is. That's yeah, we've time. had Fozzy down doing beatbox work, uh, workshops and, uh, yeah, it's wicked. They all love it, like the kids, like, That's amazing. so sick. Um, you know, I've got a huge affliction for, uh, for Wales, Cardiff, Swansea, um, Newport, places that I travelled and did shows it, it, very early I can remember you coming down the one time to the student union in Cardiff mm. that was dope yeah that was yeah popping. I can remember they brought you out you were like a puppet <laughs> you remember them shows <laughs> yeah that was amazing I never forget that night like yeah. so I had a brand new pair of trainers on and uh, I was thinking I was flying in we ended up back in the studio with um, dead residents then nice yeah I never forget that night like it was, it, Wales was certainly one of the first areas of the country which embraced me, um, Dan Small, I think his name was. I'm sure of it. Yeah, is that he, the mayor? Uh, no, he he was a, a uh, an article writer for um, for Hip Hop Connection, and he had seen me at some London show, but he was based out in Cardiff, and he made endeavours to connect me with the right promoters over there. But it was so early doors, <coughs> and I just remember seeing so much graph. Uh, it, and again, I was so young, I, I, I had nothing to gauge anything by. Mm, mm. All I knew was, well, it's not a London style. No. It's certainly not a London style. No. It's fr- in my mind, it was super fresh. Um, and also, I think you, you mentioned the liberalness of Graf now and how it's, it's more popularised and people are embracing it. Yeah. I certainly felt with Cardiff that it was embracive of, of street culture. Yeah, 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 definitely, big time. So, like, years ago, when I used to pull up a spray can, they'd be like, oh, fucking hell, what's he doing? Yeah. Ring the police, lock yeah, him up. Yeah. But now you've got, you know, some nice spots where you can chill on the River Taff, mm. have a barbecue with some beers, paint a piece. I know that's what it's not all about, but mm. it's nice to have that freedom. Mm. 
And then you get that interaction with the general public then. They're coming past and they're asking you bits. Oh, how does this work? And mm. go, how do you know what goes next? And mm. they try and give us money and shit. And we're like, no, what do you mean? Like, but well, yeah, give you money because you're doing it. Yeah. They, Making it look better. Yeah, because they love it so much, like, the general public. Stop it. That's amazing. They try give you give, some money, London. Come on. Yeah, they try and give... <laughs> give you money down there like and no way yeah it's crazy like we were painting in Bali this week and um it's mad like the older generation they just stopping going me and Cam we were doing a piece in middle of Bali town and it's like the older generation is like wow this is amazing we love this shit like do you know what I mean we're just like we never thought that you'd be the ones kind of you know and then the younger generation they just take it for granted because they've just grown up with it and yeah. they just walk on past like you know that's a very interesting point you make there because I think for the elders to see it in action I can imagine you know I mean I was thinking about this as you were talking actually how come there isn't a tip box that we just put in front when, <laughs> when writers are painting you know bring what I mean the cap out, like. yeah bringing the cap out like it's still a performance it's shit that you know it costs it's a performance um, that being said uh, that, yeah, copyright 2023 20, television um, the uh, aspect of the youth being kind of complacent at the idea mm. that you're piecing dude I think a lot about this and that is the whole idea of it becoming so normalized yeah that you know the youth like we as an age range we saw things go step by step by step by step yeah new next level new next level new next level there's a huge massive next level going on right now yeah but the kids they're so nonchalant about yeah. it yeah what is that? And they just come in at a certain level, don't they? Yeah. So it's like yeah, a, a high level, straight yeah, in, bang, straight yeah. away. So it's like the writers that started like ten years after me, like you know, they just blow you out of the water because they've just had everything to look at, and people like us to just like guide them in a way and show them the ropes and stuff. And and um, when they actually do take that on board with that, you know, that stuff to work from, they're just flying in. They they just with us. It was like a bit of a trial and error kind of thing, you know? Like, we didn't have nothing when I was growing up. Nothing, like... Let's get into it. Where did it all begin? So, like, I'm from Barry, just outside Cardiff. And, uh, yeah, so I started... When I was about 10, I started noticing, like, two... Just two tags around town. So there was nothing else, like, you know? They weren't, they weren't any pieces. There was nothing. So there was one I said best... And there was one that said cost. So I can remember just being like, what the fuck is this? Like, it's everywhere, everywhere I go. And it was just playing on my mind. Because I've always, like, wrote, like, loved writing my name and stuff. And I can remember, like, when I was a kid, I used to go around with, like, a rock and just mark X's on things. And then go walking back around to see how many I'd done before I even knew what graffiti was, like. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So I've all, I think it's like a something that's just in you anyway. Just you just want to leave a mark on something. Mm -hmm. So then, when I was about ten, then um, we used to have like this big shopping centre down on the estate. It was like two big blocks of flats either side, and then a square in the middle. It was called Winston Square. So there was just like two shops left open. The rest of it was derelict. Mm -hmm. So that later went on to become like a bit of a hall of fame down there like but um yeah so we my mum said to me the one day let's go, come come with me we're going down to the shop so i've parked on the top so i'm looking down onto the square so i'm looking down whatever daydreaming my mum's in the shop and i've just seen this kid rock up in like a pair of quad roller skates mm -hmm. and a long leather jacket i'm like oh okay what's this what's I kind of recognise him off the estate. Like, his name's Andre, like, do you know what I mean? He, he doesn't write no more, but... He just whipped out a can of paint and just wrote best and then skated off. And my mind was just blown. That was it for me. I was just like, fuck me. On, some, on some Keanu Reeves, Matrix, or roller skate, in and out. Yeah. <laughs> Leave your mark. Oh, I was just amazing. Just, like, I'll never forget it. He just rocked up, looking cool as fuck as well, on the quads and the leather. And just wrote best... One really a tag style, but he just wrote best. But I knew that was him that had been doing that everywhere. Wow! So that was it then for me. That that I was just like, so I didn't even know really. I can remember saying to my mum, "What is it? Like, what is it? Like, what's what 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 are they doing?" She just said graffiti. Did she try and deter you at any point? For, nah, no, nah? no. Nah, my mum and dad, like you know, if I've been in trouble, I've been in trouble. I've been in plenty of trouble, but like 
they've always just kind of like turned a blind eye to the graph. God, that's good. See, a word of wise words to the parents out there. They always turn the blind eye. If you brought your kids yeah. up right, you brought them right. I just think they think, you know, if he's doing that, yeah. he ain't doing anything else. Do you know what I mean, that's, I think that's what it was. And then when, you know, you, you progress as an artist, so to speak, then they love that shit, don't they? Like, you oh, know? They love it. I know, but yeah. they're proud of you now with the shop. And oh, they love it, my mum and dad. Yeah, they, they come down to the shop and they see stuff uh, online, what, what we're doing with the kids and the murals and stuff and yeah. that side of it. Like, But, yeah, they love all that. Like, But they love, you know, if I say to my old man, look, I've done this spot in the city centre. and Really? He'll go out and, and check it and have a look. Fucking great. Yeah, yeah. So this... this, uh, this uh, Nights with a long leather uh, jacket and uh, roller roller quad boots. That this was the beginning of something. Yeah, that just sparked me off. Uh, so I was doing like a little job for my uncle at the time, and he had this big uh, shed. So that was me then. I was in the shed and I clocked the spray paint. So I started uh, taking the spray paint, and that was it. I used to just write my Christian name mm -hmm. everywhere. So like I started catching them up then with breeches. Mm -hmm. So then it was in still in school, like comprehensive school and stuff. So then it was like, so Cost, who was my friend Ian, like he was a year above me. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know, I knew it of him. And he was like the, the warmest kid in the school. He was like some little Irish kid. Vibes. Yeah, like long black curly hair, little moustache, like fist twice the size of mine, but only about five foot. That's amazing. But, but, but rags like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and and everyone loved him. And, I love those characters, man. Yeah, and you you had to you had to watch your ass with Ian, like, do you know what I mean? He was a he's a tough kid. But um, yeah, some kid come along then and said, "Oh, you've been doing the graph and all." That. I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." So he said, "Oh, Ian, Cost wants to meet you." So I'm like, okay. So I'm like, I, I've oh. I've been promoted. <laughs> yeah. I'm now meeting the governor. So I'm like, oh fucking hell. So I, yeah. So we just met in like the middle of the playground and stuff. So what it was actually my first ever piece that I did. This is why he wanted to meet me. Was my Christian name on the score? So I've got the yeah. So I've got them spray paints and got up Saturday morning and we just went and just done this like little dub on the side of the score. Like probably only like about that big mm -hmm. at the moment. But it, when you a kid in it, it's like massive like yeah 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 but yeah and when i turned up to school then on the monday like after fucking school we just stood around going oh, and like a few of my boys knew it was me so i was just fucking blending in but yeah that was it then and then um someone introduced me to ian and i was just like fuck your cost like mm -hmm. so i knew of him anyway and then like soon as i met ian that was it i just wanted to be ian like do you know what i mean mm -hmm. i just wanted to be cost like and then we just hooked up. Like, we're still the best best of friends. Fantastic. And um, we just went bombing hard for years. Talk to me I about mean. that. Talk to me about that. Give me some... Uh... And so, by the way, don't try us at home. You lot, you know, this is a nice little story. You know, yeah, right? it is. We don't condone it. it. Carry on. Yes. So, yeah, we, we linked. And so, like, Barry, it was like... It's, it's like such a mad place. You know... It all goes on down there, shooting, stabbings, and it's just for a little seaside town. Mm. It's quite lively in that respect, like, do you know what I mean? And I've heard stories, yeah. It is, yeah, it's, yeah, it's live. It's got a lot of action, yeah. And then back in the 90s, it was even worse, like, do you know what I mean? So mm. there's no CCTV. They won that, they won that clue up on most things. So, mm. But it was bombed anyway, just by people that had nothing else to do. Mm. But guess some marker pens, and so there's, like, girls that from back in the day. They used to just go around and bomb. They didn't even know what they were doing, but it was just something that they did. Mm. Never was there a tourist... Um, was there a lot of people that would go painting you, that weren't from town, but because it was a tourist destination, they would just be getting... You know, like... Heads Passing from Toronto. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, not really. Really interesting. No, not really. Not really at all. So give me some names of the writers that were ballooning at that time around Barry. So you had me and Ian, mm -hmm. and then after us come Solve and Q... And we were like the first HSG then. Big up that. And then there's just been kids that's come further on down the line, like Cole and obviously Cam mm. and them boys, like. But yeah, it, like it was just so bond, Barry. And then, like, so like writers from Cardiff did just venture in and they even say, now, well, back in the day it was madness. So we did. Like, it was too much. Oh, yeah. it, was, it was mental. <laughs> so like, we're me and Ian of partnered up now and we're doing this thing it's catching on mm. 
and then you you get like every kid in the year has got a tag now because they're like yo these boys are like doing this and every kid in the year above us the injured they were all tagging i can remember the one day we're just down the park we're just doing a piece on this wall i'm like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i've just turned around and i thought fuck what have i what have we started here there must have been about 40 50 kids all with pens and Don't they were on the roofs they were doing the basketball court floors they were doing it was just mayhem college and that's what it was like in Barry when when these initial graph years took off. It was just heavy. Everyone had the tag. Even if you weren't really into it, you'd bomb anyway because mm. everyone else was bombing. We'd go around about 40, 50 of us in one, at one time. We'd go from one park to the next. All in the gang chilling out, but we all did graph. Yeah, it was mental. But, like, in those days that me and Ian were kicking off, we didn't even... We didn't have nothing. We had no point of reference, like... No subway art, no nothing. Nothing, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we didn't even know what when we were doing, like, we didn't even know it was called a tag, a piece. Whoa. We used to just call it, like, so we used to call, like, piece, a piece, jobs. Let's go and do a job. Do you know what I mean? This is, Fucking and then one day some kids turned up in school with subway art. Some random kid, like, oh, you are, you like graffiti. You might, like, got this from the library. And it's like, what the fuck do you mean? It's like, it's got names to it. It's got, like... Fuck, you had no idea. Nothing, like, nothing, nothing. What did it make you feel when you saw it? Well, it was mind-blowing, innit? Yeah. The fashion. Mm. It's like throw-ups and just the wording and mm. the trains and then, ah, it was everything, wasn't it? Well, it still is, you know, it's the yeah. Bible. Um, yeah, yeah. As a character, I mean, I would imagine for its time, it was an aggressive scene. By the sounds of it, there was yeah. a lot There was a lot of action. Mm. Um was it? I mean, was there a call to act, behave, build a persona in a particular way to 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 keep your position as with that you know to go in tow with that aggression? Was Not it a really. violent? Was it was it a violent scene? Um, obviously, we had fights amongst ourselves, and but like you know, we tried to go to like neighbouring towns and have a fight but they just see us and they'd be gone on site so we never even get to yeah. <laughs> throw hands like <laughs> yeah, they just see us getting off the train well, and be gone. Well, if you're listening and not watching you know kesto's you know he's 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 a he's he's a he's a built man i wouldn't want to cross you in the fucking park or on on the tracks well, you know what i mean no 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 i'm a <laughs> pussy cat really yeah but yeah but yeah yeah not really not really violent it was more like but very very destructive mm. Um, it was mental. So like every, so you've got them green um, BT boxes. Mm -hmm. So every single one of them bombed, 50 tags on there, every bus shelter, every phone box. And you used to be able to walk through one end of Barry to the other, through all through the back lanes, every single wall bombed. Wow. Back of the shopping centre, climbing over each other and just like, you know, and it's basically tags, and then the tags got bigger, and then, mm. it, it, like, so I really feel like we evolved in that town, like the first bunch of graph writers would have. Like, I spoke yeah. to Ree about this, like, do you know what I mean? And he's just like, yeah, like, trust me, what you're telling me is exactly how we felt kind of thing. Really? Like, yeah, it just evolved. And then, obviously, when we got the spray, uh, the subway out and shit, and, uh, and then what we started doing is, obviously going into the city and then seeing bits around there. So just up the line from Barry, you've got Grangetown and um, there was two writers there. So you've got Sab and Scam57. Nice. And they were doing bits. So they I were... love new names that, that come up. You know what I mean? This is one of them, go Google that shit, research it. Yeah, I that... love it when people talk, them, talk that talk of new names yeah. of, of a era and history. And they used to do like the like the joined up tags. The st the style on the tags was just so sick, and we'd just be like, "Oh right." So, a few rides down the line to Grangetown, and you had Sab and Scam Fifty Seven doing their thing. So they were like very inf influential on the other side of the track. Um, Scam did this like four color piece, and we're just like, "How oh, did you get pink spray paint?" <laughs> do you know what I mean? It was that primitive. Like, do you know what I mean? We're like, "Fuck you know, it's mm. done." Like, but um, and then. So after that, then um, you had Armour popped up. So Armour won, like I rate him as one of the best in the world or anything, like my boy from Cardiff. Wow, okay, Armour won. 
Yeah, very, very good. So uh, back in them days, he used to write Rubber Cub and Sense. <laughs> so then we started try. So then he'd pop up in different parts of the city. So we'd be trying to hunt this guy down. Like, we want to fucking know him. <laughs> Where is he? Who's this guy? And my boy said to me that one day he came into the school and said, yo, you need to go to the back of the fruit market in the city centre and check out what he's done. And I can remember coming around the corner and this big Sense piece with a big cat on the side of it. And I was just like... Like, that feeling, yeah. I was just like, this is proper graph, like, this is proper graffiti, like, first time you've ever seen it in the flesh, you've seen it in the book, whatever. But, bosh, that just hit you, and, like... Yeah, man, I do know that feeling really well. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So we all used to chill at, like, um, in the boys' school at the youth club, and then this, this, this girl started working in. She's seen us doing all the outlines and stuff, and she's like... Oh, so you do graffiti and stuff? She's like, oh, do you know Sense? Like, and we're like, well, you know this guy? And she's like, yeah, I'll, I'll bring him next week. <laughs> so we're like, nah, no, you no, won't. Don't be, won't. no, yeah, you won't, no, yeah. you won't. But yeah, he turned up. And when he turned up, literally, it was like Jesus arriving. Yeah, 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 it was yeah. just like, and he was just there, just like, I love, I love uh, Amma, like, you know, he's like, he's a good friend of mine. But like, such a cool down to earth guy, just like salt of the earth, amazing geezer. But he was just there doing the one, the the one line outline. Bam, next, next, next. Wow, just churning them out. Yeah, so like obviously our style started. You still coming. got yours. You still got yours. Yeah, I still got a lot of my stuff. A lot of my stuff. Wow. Most of it. Ninety nine percent of it. Like even old scraps, like anything. Even it, do you know what? If he would have dropped a sweet wrapper, I probably would have put that in my pocket. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Oh, is, is there a level of hoarding in in yeah I in do one hold stuff? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a bit habitual, isn't it? Mm. I was talking to big up Reefer. I was with Reefer last night, um, down in the pub, and uh, we were having the same conversation. It's funny the things that you hold dear, memories, particularly in graph. Mm. The, the majority of them are disposable. Yeah, graph is a disposable culture. Yeah, it's down to us to look after the shit, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah. 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 yeah so. You know, with uh, with Armour then, like, he kind of took us under his wing. So, um, and just seeing him develop and go all city on them lines and stuff. So, like, what we used to do, like, what I used to do is I'd get ready for school the night before, right. wait for my mum and dad to go to sleep. I'd be out the house, bombing all night on the lines with Armour, doing bits, get the last train home and go in the house and have my breakfast like I'd been there all... Like, I'd been there all night. Get out. Still ready. Really? Yeah, the, we, we'd be on the lines all the time. That's like. a level right there. Yeah. We, How often were you on the lines in back often, in the day? Often, often. Well, most like, of the time. Day, well, all, time? all graph was centred oh, around the, the, the train lines. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it, like now, you go bombing, you go bombing in the middle of the city centre, whatever, but it was mainly, and I think maybe trying to get close to the trains and stuff and mm. keep that side of it, like... Yeah, we focused it all on the, on the train tracks, and obviously we used to ride the train from Barry Island into Cardiff, mm. and then the track sides from the boys that were mm. there before us. Like so, yeah, it was all focused around the lines, really, when we were kids. I always find it interesting from a um, vocational point. Um, I'll throw a few other names in: um, Brighton, Bristol. Yeah, Barry sounds to me like one of those places that just has the the right. Sp- the right moment at the right time, mm. the moon stars on a line. I don't yeah. know, you know, if it was Stonehenge, it would be the graph equivocal. Like it just yeah. sounds to me like the, the 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 city has always embraced a level of graph. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think the um? Because obviously, gra- graph tagging can be either lo- loved or despised. Yeah. Do you think that despising by the Joe public? Even in a place like Barry, do, does that ever leave? Not really. You know, we're there doing some burners or something. They'll come up and go, oh, I love this, but I don't like them tags. And then we're like, yo, it all comes from the tag line. Yeah. The tag was everything, like, you know. Mm. And the hand styles, I don't think, like our hand styles back in the day, I don't think they could be matched, like. Mm. Like even even Armour and them boys will tell you, your, your hand styles back in the day, like when we used to roll into Barry and just see the, the, this... Yeah, it was going off. Every, like, everyone just 
that's all we did. So we just get better and better all the time, innit? What people don't realise is it, it's the hand style first, the tag mm. first. Hundred. But you can't, it, even from the simplest they can control. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? You can't progress without at least nailing your tag and the letters, as many letters yeah. as possible, right? Everyone in Bali had their tag down. Really? Locked. Yeah. In a real unique way, each one individual? Yeah, totally, yeah. Yeah, you're right. How do you ever go back? You know, there's because it's a small city as well, right? Yeah, well, it's just it's a town. It is. It's just outside Cardiff, like. So yeah, I, I know of it. Yes, I yeah, know of yeah. it. Yeah. Um, uh, but what where I'm coming to is when you get to that point where the level is so nice. Mm. Well, now we're in 2023. You asked the question, and I'm I'm curious to know as well. How do you ever maintain such a solid, incredible? level of hand styles and somehow make that evolve to 2023 that's a real yeah. impossible task isn't it yeah because you evolve as a writer don't you and then it's not so much about tagging you're trying to do other things and just have a look to you reckon yeah and then it's like mm. okay you master your throw and stuff like that mm. and it just gets and then like you know 90 percent of them guys they all fell off like it was just something that they did but mm. um me ian Ian doesn't write so much cost. He don't write too much now. Um, Solve, still writing. But, like, Solve couldn't just come out and just do the sickest hand styles and the sickest mm. throws still mm. to this day. Like, And that's from them mm. early years, like... Is it, has there been trends in Welsh graph that you most definitely can pinpoint as when a new style or something developed, like, or an mm. attention to a particular area of graph evolved? Yeah, and it all just comes round, don't it? Like, it, you know, it's like a slow winter time, it's all chromes and stuff. Mm. So everyone's just out smashing chromes and then mm. sun starts coming out a bit. Mm. Burners start pe- mm. appearing. In the meantime, you've got your throw-ups all around the city and around the town and stuff. And, yeah, they do, like, not so much a style, because people have kind of got their styles locked, but, yeah, different... Times of the year, you'll get the different graph popping up more predominantly. Mm. Like, you um, the trains a thing, in yeah, 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 yeah. a lot. Um, they're getting done. Yeah, yeah, they're getting done. Mainly body youths, like. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we got some wicked uh, youngers down there, and they're flying a the flag for that shit. Like, Jeremy, you know wow. I'm an old guy now. Whatever, isn't it, Jeremy? You know yeah, 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 yeah. It's like. But yeah, the freight train just to be cool. I Mate, still... I'll tell you, the freight train's my favourite. My favourite. And people have argued, like, oh, you know, no, I don't no. care what people got to say, like, oh, it's only worth anything if mm. it's on a passenger or it's on this line or it's in this city. It's a purist kind of mentality, isn't it? It's like, it's about getting your name from A to B. Yeah. yeah. You paint that train, say, in Cardiff or Newport, and then somebody spied it up in Ealing mm. two days later. Mm. My name's running, like... So he's God, never... that's good. Yeah, I've seen it, and I see it happen all the time. I I have friends that go over to Cardiff and then places just for the just for the freight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they don't get half the trouble. They don't get half nah. the trouble as they, as you would if you're doing a train. You know what I mean? Been a few uh, close calls lately. Yeah. I'm getting too fat now, and I can't run. I can't. <laughs> it is what it is. I've got to breeze on out. <laughs> yeah, breeze in, breeze out. Yeah. But they last forever as well. Yeah, it feels like that anyway. You know. But yeah, we we. You know, it's been there. Uh, like, years ago, we used to have... Um, so, like, Barry, the dock, used to be, like, um, the world's busiest port at one point. So we'd have a lot of coal moving about. So we mm. had the coal trains down there, like, these little V-shaped things. Like Love them. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah. And they used to get hammered. hammered. They're the best, man. Again, just more good reason to, you know, mm. look at things in a different way. And also, I think it's... T- dare I say it? There's a lot more toleration to it than perhaps other things. Yeah, the passengers in there, they don't like that, do they? they don't, I don't think they like it. No. They really don't like it in them. Um, talk to me about the track side here. Any, uh, any crazy stories you can remember? What a big crazy story. Every Get night, in! Every night used to be crazy. Bring out the cannons, tell um, me. Just hanging off sides of bridges and stuff. Mm. Me, uh, Armour and Solve, just chilling the one night, just doing a, a chrome on the track side and... Just oblivious, really. It's on the main, the main thing through the city. I've just looked left and I've just seen this train just trickling towards us, and we got nowhere to go. Like so, we're hanging off the other side of the bridge, 
looking down. There's like a 60 foot drop, <gasps> like a perspex roof. And we're just laughing. It's just wait for the train to go on past, pull herself up. I probably would have dropped these days. I don't know what I would have done, like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? But back in them days, thing just didn't care. It was just another day in, mm. just a day in ripping life, innit? I hear that. I hear the trains can be, well, the, I guess the slower they get, the more silent they become, right? Mm, yeah. Is that a real thing? Yeah. Like, we got a nice spot uh, down in Barry still. It's totally, like, illegal. But nobody will go there, like, it's just hidden. So you just come under this railway... You know, I'm not going to say too much on it, but it's there. Mm. Mm. And it's been getting painted for a long time, 20 odd years. Really? Wow. Yeah, and I've never seen a train rolling through there, even though there's a track rolling through. Really? And then the other day, one just had me just pulled up and he's burr, burr, and I'm just like, what? Well, so what kind of track would that be then? I mean, was it overgrown? Is it? Does it look like it's well maintained? No, it's not maintained at all, though. Okay. But um, yeah, they're just moving cargo from one side of the dock to the other. Really? But I didn't know the line was live. So you were just like having your barbecue yeah, and just smoking on it? It's like going from <laughs> home down here to me. I'm just like, whatever. And then, yeah. boof, there's some EWS trying to move you out of the way. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. How, many, um, how many Hall of Fames are there around? I mean, this is some real naive questions right here, people. But, yeah. but let's get an understanding of, of Wales as a whole. You know, it's rare we get this, you know, the, the luxury yeah. of having someone on that is, is well versed in the scene over there. Yeah. How many Hall of Fames are there? In, in the area, There's in, loads, in Wales. Loads. So you've got yeah. the, the big park, uh, Seven Oaks in Grangetown, mm -hmm. which holds a lot of history. So like you had like, some of the first writers in Cardiff started there mm. and most of it's documented. Like So when the wall, the wall's giant. Really? God knows, it's like 25 foot <laughs> by about a mile. I painted Fuck. it all one day with a motion. It took me 11 and a half hours. That's some Trellick level size, right? Oh, it's bigger than Trellick. Bigger than Trellick? Yeah, twice the size of Trellick. Stop it. Yeah, twice so the size. So what was it then before? It's just a park, and then you've got the wall, and then the train, the train runs along the top. The wow. But now it's open. It's a Hall of Fame. Like You can just go there and paint. We've had people roll through there recently. Shining Quest were there the other day. Big up Shining Quest. Yeah, big up Shining Quest. Legends, man. Um... Yeah, people have just come there to paint, so we got that. Then you've got um, the Millennium Boardwalk, which is outside the Principality Stadium. Mm -hmm. Just like a big, long old stretch of boards on the River Taff. That's nice. amazing to paint in the summer. Do you know what I mean? I'm always down there doing bits. What a be I've been around them areas as well. That's a beautiful yeah. location we're painting. That's like, yeah. Some, yeah, like you say, there's, there's so much activity going on, tourism. Mm. Yeah, like I was there painting the other day and I didn't realise when I got there... Uh, I think Wales were playing Ireland in rugby. Hmm. So I was just like, oh, whatever. I just started painting it and the match broke out. So all them people had to walk past me and they all had something to say. Most of them were just like, oh, fuck it. Yeah, yeah, last thing you need. Yeah. And then we got um, Maitland Park, which is cool. And then like little areas like up through City Road and shit. So they're not necessarily legal spots, but people are just so used to the graph. Mm. You know, that you can just go there and paint freely. Tolerated. Yeah, it's just tolerated, like, you it's know. the order of the day. What about Swansea? Do you know a, a lot about the Swansea scene? Um, yeah. Um, this boy's down there, they're doing their thing. They've been doing their thing for years. Yeah. Probably around the same amount of time as Cardiff. Nice. The Cardiff boys, but... Got any names that you could throw out there? Um, I'll pick them up later. There's Da down there, there's Dano mm -hmm. doing their thing, and uh, all them boys, the POS boys. Yeah, they're cool. Nice. Good stuff. Nice. A lot of history to, to lot of history, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, uh, oh, wow. Newport. Newport, obviously, it gets its, gets its music roots and, you know, Goldie Looking Chain and the like. Uh, yeah. Big up Asteroid Boys as well. Asteroids. Some more Dons, man. Fucking hey. yeah. I mean, actually, when I think about it now, like, Wales has brought through some fucking yeah. heavy hitters in, in, in hip hop in general, haven't they? Yes, you've got, like, Squid Ninjas. Mm. And and them boys. And, but yeah, the talent. Wonky, wonky records, you know what I mean? Yeah, all the wonk stuff. Yeah, wonksters, yeah. Yeah, but like, so much talent, like even in Barry, like the talent that's got away within like our kind of culture, like so, some of the drum and bass DJs and MCs mm -hmm. down there, it's just like, if you put him and him together, like I know my music kind of thing, mm -hmm. like I know what's, what's popping. Mm -hmm. You put that DJ and that MC together, they'll go anywhere and hold their own with anyone. Yeah. Just like the writers from Cardiff. Yeah. You take like Hoax and Armour 
and put them in any major city around the world. And against any it. two writers in yeah. the world. They all hold their own, them boys, yeah. like, you know. It's funny you say that. And big up local as well, because that's another yeah, Lokes, OG yeah. man. Like, Good he's boy. building his thing, building his thing. And you're right. I saw him... Oh God, I can't remember who his DJ was. Sometimes you need... Um, to, for, for, for the value and opportunity to pair the right people together, yeah. to go the distance together, yeah. it becomes a bit of a call to arms for people that are trying to break out of... Areas like, you know, Cardiff or, yeah. you know, Blackpool or, ah, oh, no fucking Derby. I don't know. It's, but, but you make your name that way, don't you? Yeah, totally. <sighs> yeah. There's so much ta- There's so much good talent there, like, in the city. Cardiff still, like mm. Barry. So much talent down there. Mm. You know, maybe you don't get the kind of opportunity you would if you were some from some other part of the UK, but it doesn't take anything away from the talent. Like, they, they, there's some good stuff going on. Mm. Going back to the shop... Um, because obviously your legacy's there. You yeah. Know, you know, do you think, right? So from a from a graffiti rep, reputation point of view, having a shop and being a legitimate bona fide writer mm. that holds a lot of gravitas, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, but does that does that table turn when you're trying to do something for the good of the community, and if you're Selling, I've had this conversation with Zombie to be fair, so I'm I'm rehashing a, a, an age old question. Um, how 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 are you validating one side of the coin, but then I know oh, for argument's sake, doing a community dr- driven commission or something? Because happened. what I think, okay, you're you're in both sides of the coin, mm. but if you're keeping it real, both sides of the coin, it's a win. Nobody can say nothing to you. No, that's right. Because okay, I might be out there doing a mural. With ten school kids, the mm. one day, mm. but then the next night I'm out smashing shit. Do you know what I mean? And and that's the correct end answer. It. Well done, that man. Fucking right. And that's completely the end agree, of it. bro. So like you know, you get some boys. They might oh fucking taking a piss and what are you doing there? What are you doing? I'm fucking do my thing, man. Oh. And then I'm gonna come out and do my thing with you boys too. Well, I think what people don't realise, <coughs> people don't realise, and you know, in jest I said, you know, a tip box or whatever. But um, but people don't realise that this shit has overheads. If you're running a yeah. shop, yeah. what do you expect people to do? Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's, it's a big industrial unit we've got, like, and we've done it. So it's, like, doubled up as the Welsh Museum of Graffiti as well. Stop it. Yeah, so, like, all the artwork we've collected over the years from all around the world, that's up in there. And then you've got the music studio upstairs and, you, you know, it's amazing down there. It's, it's up there with some of the best... Got to be one of the best graph shops in the world. I have got to get down. Got, yeah, this everyone, place, everyone needs to come and check it. It's amazing down there. What we've done down there, like you know, big up Cam, my boy, my partner. Mm. Like what we've done and what and what he's done, it's it's a good look down there. It's nice. So, but obviously that shit costs money. Mm. So you have to branch out and get money. All right. Now, obviously, we don't indulge too much on the overheads to or or any kind of finer print. Yeah. But. I think for a lot of people, it's how do you start a shop? How, how does that, I mean, how do you, how do you build something like that? That's a dream come true. Yeah. So I need to go back to me and Cam, really. So um, you had that slot, me, Cost, Solve and, and all them guys. And I used to knock about with Cam's uncle. And I can remember being down on Winston Square and painting a piece and mm. seeing him getting dragged along by his mum and like... We didn't know that that little kid would grow into Cam, <laughs> who, was a, who was an absolute monster yeah. with graph. He, wow. he, he had shit off the boy. And so he grew up then looking at my stuff kind of thing. Mm. And then in between this, I spent a lot of... I spent most of my 20s in, inside. And then, like, keeping an eye on the scene and stuff from in there. You were inside? Yeah, I did a... Yeah, I'd done quite a bit. Yeah? Yeah. What quite... was it, graph-related or...? Not graph-related, other things and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so... Like, yeah, so just, like, back to the story. So, when we were, like, 20, 21 then, it's, like, a mad thing. Because, like, remember I said how, like, rough and tough Ian was cost? <laughs> so, we were out chilling the one night, and he just said, oh, listen, um, I'm a born-again Christian. So I said, okay, like... So he actually then um, married a vicar's daughter 
and he went off the scene. So wow! And then he actually became a Baptist minister. Get out! So from like the roughest, toughest kid from the roughest, toughest area in Barry, he's dragged himself out of that. Wow! And become a Baptist minister. He had his own parish and stuff. He was the really? yeah. He, you know, and um, wow. so. Yeah, Ian now, what he actually does, he, he works for... He's Prince Edward's gardener. Stop yeah, it now. Yeah, it's mental, isn't it? So, like, the roughest, toughest little graffer, you know, and he still loves graff and he still does art and stuff. But, yeah, he, he works for Prince Edward now. Like. I am blown away. Yeah. Ain't that a... Change direct turn up for the The biggest, book. the biggest ever, like. I'm so proud of him, like. He's, he's done amazing. Like, we went to his yard not so long ago, so... You know, he didn't have a lot growing up. Like, but now he's got a level of opulence. Yeah, being I just pulled up outside his house and I was just like, wow, some big five-bedroom detached with the golf course on the back. You are... Up in Surrey. And he's dragged himself oh. out of that. Out of that. Big seat. up that man. Yeah, Honestly, cost. I love a good story like and that. And hardcore bro. back in the day. No one could have touched him. He wouldn't touch him in graph. He wouldn't touch him in a fight. And that's the end of it. That's just made my day. I love stories like that. Yeah. So, like, the, like the thing with me and Ian, so, like... And like my my dad was always like a grafter growing up. We always done well, like. Mm. And then he and like the family were not doing so well. You know, I was still love it. Loved him like a brother anyway. It didn't matter to me. I dived mm. in feet first with him. Yeah. And then his life kind of went that way. And as his life was going up, my life was kind of going down. I started getting into trouble, mm. back and forth prison, stuff like that. So yeah, basically done the best part of ten years in and out. But in this time, Cam was developing then. So it was actually when I was off on 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 my mad ones, Ian uh, cost he did like a little youth club thing, <laughs> and he saw Cam there and got Cam into graph. Wow! So then Ian's gone off and done his thing with the church, and then Cam started. So, so like, it's like passed the baton. On yeah. So thing. Ian's gone with the church. I've gone to prison, and Cam started. So he's grown up looking at all our stuff. Yeah. But we're not there. So he's hooked up with like Armin and them boys and stuff like that. They've taken him under the wing and developed him, and now he's sick. So by the time I've come out like 10 years later. You're like Buck Rogers walking into the 25th century, yeah. like, what the fuck's going on with his grafting? Because I used to say to this screw, right? I used to say, oh, do me a favor, do me a favor. I said, um, go online and um, like kind of like search for Cardiff graffiti, Welsh mm -hmm. graffiti, so I could see what was going oh, would on. He, would he print them off for you? Yeah, he'd print them off. He sounds like a comparable screw. He was all right. Yeah. yeah, they just fly under the door and I'd just be like, fuck it, hello's this kid. Like, do you know what I mean? Like Didn't you ever get anybody visiting you with flicks or anything? Nah, no, no, not 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 from the graph world, no, no, no. no. I did I did have always had letters off Brad and um Cost and mm. them boys. But they obviously like Cost wasn't really doing so much graph and he wasn't in the town anyway, so mm. yeah, and like you know, it kind of broke my heart not to be part of that somewhere. I just shut it off anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I did just to, like, keep my eye on shit while I was going on. So it was just this kid. I was like, fuck, he's amazing. Did you sketch from in jail? With, did, yeah, I've done some sketch. Yeah, like, so. That's another story as well. So towards the end of, like, the prison stuff, mm. um, like, I did, did, like, a three... I did three years straight, mm. come out. I was only out ten minutes. I was straight back in. So during that time, um, I was recalled. I had a big license to do. I had like six years to do. So what, that was it. Once you're recalled on your license, mm. you're doing the six years until you get parole. So my head was blown kind of thing. It, 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 was, a, it was a bit of a tough time, but I, you know, I just swallowed it, whatever. But my mate was in there and he was doing these murals with paintbrushes and shit. So I was like, fucking let me jump on that. So in the end, we just had this job, me and my mate Noel. And we were going around, like, the prison in uh, Bridgen, the park, and we were doing, like, big bow days on the wall. And Stop the, it. Yeah, the Cheech Wizard and shit. And, really? Yeah, we done, like, a no, big... Really, you get away with it? Yeah, they were just, like... They, they were just happy if you do something. Yeah, they just loved it. You know, it, it calmed me down, like, because I was up, up, up the fucking wall, really. <laughs> but, yeah, we had a... So I actually kind of, like, did graph all over the jail down there and like the screws are go what like you coming on my wing next i want this done and stuff like that and, Fuck yeah so now. it was mental so like i actually painted my way to freedom like when my probation or inside probation officer showed 
um, like the parole board kind of thing, the the body of work that I'd done with a paintbrush as well, right? No spray can. They wouldn't let me have a spray can. I said, give me the fucking spray paint. I would do the whole thing oh, in a day. Oh, yeah. But, nah, you could, they wouldn't give them to us. But, yeah, the, the parole board wow. said just release him the one day. I was painting this big saxophone. I was um, having the exercise, yeah, I was painting this big, sax of, big saxophone. And uh, I see my inside probation officer walking over and she's just like, look, um, I've got some bad news. I've got some good news. I said, right, what's the bad news like? And she's like, you're not going to be able to finish that mural. The saxophone. So I thought, oh, I said, oh, where are they shipping me out to? I thought I was going on a ghost train kind of thing. Mm. But they're like, now nah, you're going home. I'm like, what do you mean I'm going home? Because <gasps> I'm thinking six years, whatever, do you know what I mean? They're like, no, you're going home tomorrow. You're going home in the morning. So, so I was just like... how much did they cut your sentence to then? So out of the six-year recall, I did about another 18, 19 months. Oh, my God. But a flat-out painting. So that got me back into the craft. That got the, the, the juices flowing then. So when I come back out, I'm like, yo, I need to go and hook up with, with, with the boys. So I did like a couple of little pieces with um, Cam, like it was from by the kids growing up, mm. who saw our stuff growing up. Mm. And then um, I started doing uh, a bit of painting and decorating, and I was doing that. What so story? I used to, wow. So I used, to take, um, I used to take Cam with me, just doing painting and decorating. So we started working together quite regularly. Then I started getting back more into the graph. It's fucking great. So he's taking me under the wing because I waded in like, yeah, yeah, you know, I know what I'm doing. And he's just like, bro, you fucking, you don't really. <laughs> Let me, sh- do you know what I mean? So like, I've learned so much from him. Like, I've come on as a writer so much just from being with that guy. Like, wow. Um, so then the one day we're just chilling. We'd already got the industrial unit for something else. But I'm like, yo, let's just open the shop, innit? Mm. Let's just open a craft shop. Mm. So we just went, yeah, let's bam, let's do it. And he's sick with his hands. He built like all the counters and the and the rack and shit. And you know, I'm there painting it and putting the graph up and hanging the pictures and shit. That's how we roll. We work. We work good as a team. Like you know, so it's it's like a family, you know. It's like I've come full circle. He's come full circle, and then to link up at the end to open the shop together and for it to do well. It's a it's a good it's thing. It's a blessing, isn't it? It's blessed. I feel so blessed, like. If you aren't watching and listening, this is the happiest dude you're, you're likely to be watching today. Yeah. It's fantastic to have you here. What's the future? Um, just more graph, more, more shop. Graph. Yeah, whatever it may be, more you life. know. Yeah, more life. Love it. I love that you love it. It's infectious, and I'm totally looking forward to getting down there, man. You're welcome any time. You know we got you, bro. My brother. 100. My guy, gets to inside the place. That's it. Killer Gala podcast, Ally, and was out of fashion. Sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Hold tight, Wales. Big up Cardiff and Barry um, and uh, all the other areas that have been representing um, the art form from jump. Uh, like ourselves, we keep it moving. Don't talk to anyone, I wouldn't. You stay lucky, people. Peace. Yeah, that was sick. Woo! Went quick, didn't it?